Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to this week's author reading and author advice on all about Canadian books. I am thrilled to have Marissa Stapley as a guest with me today. And if you missed our behind the book interview, I will put a link at, in the description box below and also at the end of this video so you can hear Melissa talk about her latest novel, Lucky. Welcome, Melissa. Marissa, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, before I have you read from your new novel, Lucky, was wondering if you could share a piece of advice for inspiring writers. So, I mean, I really, I think the best advice that I can give to aspiring writers is to, is to sit down and do the, do the work. It's so easy to get caught up in the idea of becoming a published author and everything that goes along with that. Um, but none of that can be achieved until you actually do the work and it's not going to always be fun it's not going to be easy and you cannot achieve your dreams unless you do the hard work um, and then the second part of that advice is also that once you sit down and you start doing the hard work and realize how difficult it is and have those periods of self-doubt and what if and all of that just to to not give up um, publishing is not a race. It is absolutely a marathon. It's a marathon that I'm still on and will be on until the day that I get tired and say that I, I can't do it anymore. Um, and it, the sooner you learn that, um, this, the, the happier you will be on your journey. Right. So that's the best advice I can offer. Well, I think that's very good. <laughs> that's very good advice. Thank you for that, for that wisdom. Thank you so much. And uh, so everyone sit back, get comfortable. Marissa is going to read, I believe the first chapter from her new novel, Lucky. Yeah, so it's more, I think I would call it maybe more the prologue. So this is really okay. the setup of Lucky and how the very, very beginning moments of Lucky's life, actually. Um, and I will also say that when I first wrote this passage, it was, I had already started Lucky. I wasn't quite sure I had the right beginning. I wrote this all in a rush and I have two kids and I said, okay, I'm going to read this to you guys and tell me if you, if you like this. And they usually are like, okay, fine. <laughs> but they were both at the end, like, Ooh, we want to know what happened. So I think if you can hook preteens, you can hook anybody. Okay, so this is February, 1982, New York City. Someone had left a baby outside the nunnery and it was Margaret Jean's night to listen for the door. The rest of the sisters had their earplugs in and couldn't hear the wails that pierced the air. But still, she stayed motionless in her bed, hoping someone else would wake and relieve her of the drama. Sister Francine, for example, who loved to be busy. Sister Danielle, who had a solution for everything. The baby's cries grew louder and still no one else woke. Margaret Jean touched the gold crucifix around her neck. She had been at the nunnery only a few months. She was still going, undergoing her aspirancy. The nuns were supposed to decide the following week if she could become one of their order. This was the first night she had been left in charge, a test. This is why I have my reading glasses here. She wasn't really a Catholic. She had forged a baptismal certificate. It did seem like a brilliant con, her best one yet, to pose as a young woman seeking to pledge her life to the church. No one would ever look for her here. She would be safe, except she was expected to be a saint, and she wasn't one. The crying continued. It was freezing out there. The child could die. She forced herself to stand, pull on a cardigan, and move off down the hall, a flashlight in hand. She pushed hard against the wind to open the front door. A little bundle rested on the middle stair. Pink blankets, a tiny fist, curled and shaking. Dear God, if only this could be someone else's problem, Margaret Jean found herself praying. This habit was as new as the one she had borrowed to wear tonight. It felt like a costume. There was a man walking along the sidewalk toward the cathedral. He stopped and stood at the base of the steps, listening, then walked up, walked up them while Margaret Jean stood still, watching. He knelt. He said something to the baby, but Margaret Jean couldn't hear what because of the wind and the crying. He lifted the baby into his arms and she stopped her wailing. Margaret Jean remained as still as possible. The man looked up at her. He placed his hand on his heart. Sister, he said, 
The wind died down. The habit fell back around her face and shoulders. The man moved up the stairs with the baby in his arms. Sister, he repeated. She nodded. Hello. The man was too handsome, like Cary Grant or Rock Hudson. She had met this kind of man before, had the kind of intimate knowledge of men like this that nuns were not supposed to have. The elbows of his jacket were threadbare, but his shoes were mirror shiny. His hair was gelled, so it barely moved in the wind. I'm John, he said. I'm sorry you were awakened by my child. Your child? Yes, and... Here he raised his eyes heavenward. Thank God I found her. My wife Gloria has been struggling with, well, you know, the baby blues. There was a faint hint of an Irish lilt in his rounded vowels. Tonight I went out to work and when I returned, she was beside herself. She told me she'd gone and left the baby somewhere, a church. I've been walking around the city all night trying to find which, and now here she is, thank God. Why didn't you call the police and get my own wife arrested? He was staring into her eyes, searching for something. She knew he wouldn't find it. Instead, he said, I prayed for a miracle. And here it is. I found my child. You can go back to bed now, sister. Margaret Jean looked down at the baby. Your wife should seek help, she said. Of course, I promise she will. But my wife deserves another chance. Don't all God's children deserve another chance, sister? The way he was speaking to her, it was as if he knew her, as if he knew all about the second chances she did or did not deserve. She felt a wave of compassion for him, coming upon her as quickly as the bread delivery truck now barreling down the street, about to begin its early morning rounds. I hope, she began, trying to think of the right thing to say, that you and your family are blessed with good fortune. The man was looking at the gold crucifix around her neck. We could use a little help, he said. I could sell that gold. Is there any way you could spare it, sister? Margaret Jean, she supplied. So we could pay for groceries, he continued, and for formula, since my wife's in such a state her milk has dried up. The necklace was just a prop, real gold, but a prop nonetheless. She took it off and placed it on the baby. It's 14 carat. It felt good to do good, she realized, to give rather than take. She peered down at the baby. What's her name? A brief hesitation, but Luciana, he said, we named her after my mother. Margaret Jean chose to believe him. She placed her fingers on Luciana's brow and made the sign of the cross, just as the priest had done to her hours before during the Ash Wednesday service. Your sins are forgiven, she said, raising her eyes to the man's. The problem with reading the Bible too often, day after day, the way an aspiring nun was required to, was that you started to believe miracles could happen anywhere, even in Queens. Margaret Jean imagined that she really had blessed the child and the man, that she was protecting them and would see them both again someday, that she had done the right thing. She bolted the door behind her and returned to her monastic cell, where she prayed for the baby and the man, prayed that they would be blessed and that they would be lucky. And that's the beginning. And, and that we- is the <laughs> beginning. Oh <laughs> my gosh, I was hooked. <laughs> Marissa? Thank you so much for being a guest on to, on All About Canadian Books and best wishes for success and all this fun promoting your book and your screenwriting. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you for the, for the support and promotion of Canadian Books. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. <laughs>